Hockey! Hey, what's up, everybody? We made it till the end of the year, and what a year it was. So many great games have been released this year. I lost count, honestly. But that's not gonna stop me from making my own top 10 games of the year list. I will be going through the games I've played myself, and that will not include some games people might expect. So don't go raging in the comments when your favorite game of the year isn't on this list, okay? Also, I will not include remakes unless they overhaul the entire game. So with all that out of the way, these are my top 10 favorite games of 2023. Starting out with number 10, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Now before you click away, let me explain. Back when it released, I kind of wanted to skip over it because, um, well, I've played the first one and that was kind of a dumpster fire, if I'm being honest. But then, I got the game for free. So I tried it out and I was surprised how much I enjoyed this over the first one. Pretty much everything has improved here. They added voice acting, the entire movement, like every single frame has been done way better than in the first one. It felt way more choppy in the first one than it does here. That new roguelike mode, I really enjoyed. I streamed it for a good like 3-4 hours without stopping. I personally think that it's pretty reasonable to put this game at number 10. All right, on to number nine. This might also be a controversial opinion, but Sonic Superstars. And yes, I know this game wasn't all it was promised to be. It wasn't as good as we've all thought at the beginning, but I still really enjoyed playing it. Whenever a new Sonic game comes out, there's always gonna be that question. Is it going to be good or is it going to be bad? And for this one, it was somewhere in the middle. Lots of people hated it, and lots of people did actually like it. And I am one of the few who actually did like it. I liked how the game controlled, I liked some of the music as well, even though the music was also kind of a mixed bag in my opinion. I also really enjoyed the special stages here. I also liked that they brought back an old character, Fang, the sniper, and they made a new one actually playable as well. If you beat the game, you can unlock Trip. All right, with Sonic Superstars on number nine, we move on to number eight, the finals. I'm putting this game on number eight because I want to put some stuff from different genres of games in there. And this is the FPS game I'm playing right now with friends. And it's really fun. It's a three versus three game where you have to collect cash from ATM machines. When you collect the cash, everybody in the server can see that you're carrying it. So they're all coming after you for that cash. It's insanely fun. It is free. And it's one of my favorite games of the year. Moving on to number seven. F-099. Back when this was announced, I actually felt bad for F-0 fans because they haven't got a game in an eternity almost. <laughs> like, it's been so long. But then I played this and I got hooked on it for like an entire stream. I, I was playing this for like four to five hours straight without any breaks. And you can bet your ass that I played more of it after that stream. In fact, it's one of the best multiplayer games on the Switch right now. And all you need is an online subscription. The game itself is completely free. For me, this game easily beats Tetris 99, Pac-Man 99, and even Mario 99. The game is just that good. Moving on to number six, Marvel's Spider-Man 2. I now finally played all three of these games, and I gotta say, this one was pretty good for the most part. There was a lot of stuff that I didn't like about it. It dragged on a little bit too long. There was still those annoying MJ parts in there. Um, those puzzle parts were still there, but the main story was good. Also, spoilers for the ones who don't want to get spoiled on some of the story. Click away right now. You're gone? Good. All right, at the end of the first Spider-Man game, there was announced that Harry Osborn was in some sort of capsule getting healed by something. And this something turned out to be the symbiote. The symbiote is the abomination that becomes Venom. So Harry Osborn is Venom in this game. And you actually get to control it at some part. So not only do you get to play as two Spider-Mans, you also can play as Venom. Which, to be honest, was my favorite mission by far. When I controlled Venom, I was absolutely fisting the enemies. Like, it was crazy. For that alone, it deserves the spot at number six. All right, we're at the final five. And for number five, it will be Resident Evil 4 Remake. 
I already said before, I wouldn't do remakes unless they overhauled the entire game and boy, they did. They gave this game a new coat of paint. It's incredible. Like, I don't have anything negative to say about it. You should play this game. If you like survival horror games, this is right up your alley. Only reason it's not higher on the list is because I enjoyed it less the second half of the game, because I enjoy games a lot when I'm streaming them. And my audience doesn't really like Resident Evil is what I'm getting at, because there weren't that many viewers in the stream, so I was like, why bother streaming this? I could just beat this privately. And that was a mistake. I should have streamed it because I would have enjoyed it way more. But then again, it's not the game's fault. It's my fault. So if the same audience is watching this video, you should play this game and try it for yourself. It's pretty fun. It's creepy. It has a good atmosphere. It also has a good difficulty to it. I died multiple times. It's it's fairly challenging. So you should try it too. Moving on to number four. At number four, we have none other than Pikmin 4. I have to admit, I am fairly new to the Pikmin series. I had a GameCube, but never played the Pikmin games, because, well, I wasn't that interested in them. I just looked at box arts, you know, back in the day, and it was like, mm, I don't know, this seems kind of boring, you know, as a kid. But now I played this game, and I was like, I couldn't stop. It was so fun, like, like just the day and night system with these games, how you just gather Pikmin to solve the problems, get items, bring them to your ship, Upgrade everything, it's it's so, so unique. Also, I really like the underground caverns you can go into, the places where you had to rescue the people of your crew. I also love these little Dendori battles you could do. Also, the way you could create your own character and have this dog following you around and upgrading the dog, training the dog so it could swim, having all these kind of pigments that do different things like making water eyes, maybe walk through water, electricity. Then you have to think to which one to use on enemies because some of the enemies have different weaknesses. It's, it's really creative and I loved it. And the only thing holding it from being higher on the list is, well, the game's higher on the list. This year has just been that good with games. Moving on to number three. PPP Pizza Tower. Hell yeah. This is by far one of the best indie games I have played in my entire life. And I'm that serious. The moment I saw this game lost to some random ass indie game for best indie game of the year at the Game Awards, I wanted to riot because this was rigged. Not giving this game best indie game of the year is an insult to mankind. Because how could you not love Wario Land on crack? This game just takes the Wario Land formula and just throws it around and says, fuck it, we can do this better. This game is full of wonderful animation and precision platforming. Like, I haven't played a precise platformer like this since I've touched Mario Sunshine on the GameCube. This could have been the best 2D platformer I have played this year if it wasn't for number two. It's Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Why is this at number two, are you wondering? If you don't like the puns, you can leave. This game really knocked it out of the park for me. The amount of customizability you have on your movements this time around. The multiplayer, you can play with so many people. You can play with, I think, 12 different people in the same server. It's crazy. And if you want to 100% the game, the game's pretty beefy as well. I am still not done with my 100% playthrough. I still have to collect every single standee for my save file to be 100% completed. Also, not to forget about the completely new art style, although you could ditch the elephants in my opinion. But whatever, whatever, it is what it is. The art style is neat. It looks way better and way more exciting than the new Super Mario Bros. style. The Wonder Flowers are like an LSD fever dream, and I freaking love it. But then there's only one game that tops every single game on this list. It's the number one, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, probably some people were expecting this, but I have to put it on number one since I have never played a game more enjoyable than this one. It was my most anticipated game of the year and for a good reason, because this game slaps. It just knocks it out of the park in every single direction. Even the performance was not bad. This is how you do it, Game Freak. 
They grabbed the world of Breath of the Wild and said, what if we make it 100 times more fun? I have no idea if Mr. Ayanuma has been playing Gary's Mod, but um, this was a genius idea. Adding Gary's Mod-like things, like welding stuff together, making vehicles, and all that stuff, it works so well. And the moment I dived into the underground, my god, my mind was blown at that moment. I didn't know that was there at all. I was just diving down and I was completely flabbergasted. I was like, what? This vast open world with all these things to do and all these different things I could make and create, it's, it was too much at one moment. I was like, holy shit, this is gonna distract me from the main story. <laughs> like, I'm gonna invent stuff. I'm gonna make things that, that drive and fly around and do all kinds of stuff. Damn, what a game. Like, for real though. This has to be not only my favorite game of the year, but my favorite game of all time. It's that good. With that all out of the way, this was my top 10 games of 2023. I hope you all enjoyed it and have yourselves a damn good one.